I need to mention at this point what the law of the lover is, because you'll hear that used a lot of times. If you think of that, the old seesaw or teeter-totter or whatever it was you grew up calling it, probably before safety people said it was unsafe for you to actually ride one of these things in the, in the playground, you always know that you have to put the lighter people farther away from the fulcrum. So mom and dad would ride the teeter-totter closer to the middle than you would. In general, when we're talking about the law of the lever, what we mean is that FA is equal to GB. So whatever two forces you have, if they're acting along a single line, you don't actually have to take the sum of the moments at the fulcrum with the whole cosines and sines thing. The law of the lever says that you can just say along the lever as well. Now, how does that work? We know that a moment has to be summed at a perpendicular distance. But the, the, the reality here is that my lever is a single line. So whatever angle is acting at the bottom of the lever is acting at the top of the lever too. So if I broke my forces up, both of them, perpendicular to and along the actual lever, I could sum the moments here at this fulcrum and see what happens. So this would be F cosine theta and G cosine theta were perpendicular to the actual lever. F sine theta and G sine theta are along the lever. Now, forces that lie along the direction of the lever aren't going to cause a moment at O. So what I end up here with is F cosine theta times A and G cosine theta times B. Well, of course, the cosine thetas are going to cancel. This is generally not a huge topic. It's just something that, if you notice it, can shortcut your work.